Thank you, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for uh, the invitation to come here and speak today. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, I can come here and uh, try to uh, inspire you a bit. My uh, speak today will be a bit different from the others. I must be uh, honestly, I haven't understand everything uh, what's been said, but uh, I know that uh, the things uh, that I'm going to say would be uh, a bit different. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is that we are standing in front of uh, a lot of change. We're standing in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, transformation. Uh, you probably all know this uh, target, the Paris uh, Agreement. We have to save our uh, CO2 and, and, and the temperature of the Earth to 1.5. It's not going that well. Uh, we have a lot of discussions uh, about how we uh, act uh, in, as, as human beings uh, uh, at the planet and uh, what uh, do we do with our planet and the, the boundaries for our planet, we are actually crossing them too much. Uh, as you can see here, um, from 2009 to, uh, to last year, uh, 23, we are just going the wrong way. The, the boundaries are uh, being crossed uh, much, much more. And uh, if you don't know about this, I will really uh, suggest that you are uh, looking into this and seeing how, how do we, where do we, do things that is, is uh, wrong for our planet. Uh, it's serious business and uh, a lot of people are talking about uh, what, uh, what's the future uh, for the Earth and for the humankind. Uh, so actually some people are, uh, are saying that we don't gonna have ice in the, in the, uh, in the North Atlantic and they put up uh, things like this, a letter to the future, telling that here was a glacier some years ago and uh, actually in 20, 50 years, uh, there will be no more glaciers at, at Iceland. Uh, so we are really changing, and all that water uh, that come from is, is, is today is, is in the ice, will uh, go into the sea and will um, actually uh, do uh, Marshall's uh, floating houses much more relevant than, uh, than we have today. The, um, the biggest uh, discussion that we have at the moment is that we have to look the way we are a, a part of the nature. Today, man is using nature for all the things we're doing, all the things we're building, all the products we're doing. Uh, we're using that so the biodiversity is going down. So the big change at the moment is that we are trying to look that we are a part of nature instead of just using the nature. We are, we are, we are more a part of the nature and we, will try, we shall try to structure the way we are living as a part of the nature and not just uh, using it. With today I'm talking about cities. Uh, cities, we have some small nice cities here in, in Europe. Uh, this, the big cities in the world is going one way. Uh, the population of the earth is increasing and some of the, the, the cities uh, are very, very big. Uh, so we see looking into this uh, 70, uh, 60 millions of people living in one city. Um, so it's just going very, very fast and the urbanization is, uh, is a global thing. That means also that uh, we really have to look into how to transform our cities. Uh, this is a new city area in, in, the, in the harbor of uh, Copenhagen. It's only a little part of it, but it's look most like a, a normal city, but a lot of this is uh, uh, being done with the urban mining. You have found the bricks uh, in, in the existing uh, areas. The whole uh, electricity system is, um, is uh, totally renewable. So it's a lot of change. You can see the, uh, uh, the sun cells on the roof. And, and actually up here, this is an action place. You can run up here, it's a parking lot but you can run up here and then you can do your exercise up here, uh, looking out of, of, over the water. It's another way we try to integrate uh, solutions in the city. But the most important thing is that we have to change our mindset. Uh, we have to find some new solutions. We have to do things in a different way. All the, not all, but a lot of the way we are thinking today, uh, we have to do in another way. Uh, when I'm talking about uh, regenerative cities, uh, we're looking into that the way we have 
built our cities, the way we are structured, the way we have uh, input into the city and the flow out of the city is a very one way in, one way out. Uh, when we look how to, to structure cities uh, in the future, we really have to see the flow. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, Singapore and, and uh, actually they have this water system that all the water they use is uh, the water they have inside the city and so on. And we really have to see can we, how, how to, can we find other ways to, uh, to structure the, the flow of food, the flow of water, the flow of energy inside the cities. One of the most important thing is to have a vision. Marshall named that we had this vision in uh, Copenhagen of having a clean harbor. It totally changed the whole city of how we structured it. Another very, very good one uh, was a plan just uh, after the war. Uh, some city planners were sitting and, and looking at the city of Copenhagen and uh, they said, oh, suddenly they said, oh, this looks like a hand. Uh, the, the structure, the existing structure of the city. So they make this vision uh, for the city. So now today when you see Copenhagen, we are always developing into the fingers uh, out here. Uh, and that means that we have uh, green areas and uh, uh, forest and uh, agriculture areas almost into the center of the city. Uh, so people have easy access to, to nature. And there was a plan from 47, we have made our railways in the fingers. We have made these principles of where to build in these fingers. So we still, yeah, that's many years, uh, many years ago, and we still have this plan for, for the city. So it's important to have these big visions. And speaking about Singapore, it's very funny because if you see the structure of Singapore, they have been in Copenhagen and see uh, how we did, and uh, the structure of, uh, of Singapore is actually the same figure plan. Uh, we are also looking into uh, that we are not alone. Uh, we have created uh, all these uh, computer systems, all the digital systems, and uh, AI will take over a lot of functions and come with a lot of new ideas. It takes uh, one second to make a vision of a city uh, with some happy people looking into uh, a green city. Uh, and we love our architects. Uh, and all the good ideas we have there, uh, but uh, uh, you will all be challenged in, in, uh, in how fast uh, every, everybody can do that. You just name three words and then you get a picture like this. Uh, so, so it's, it's uh, very easy to, for everybody to do that. That's one part of it. The other part of it is, of course, that, that all the uh, legislation, all the way we're looking, all the, uh, yeah, the lawyers, everybody else is gonna, gonna work in a different way in maybe t uh, 10 or 20 years. Some are already uh, looking into a, a big difference in, in the job, but that also have a big uh, uh, influence on how we make the city planning because then suddenly we're gonna change the way we are working. Uh, most of us are already changed it uh, during the, uh, the uh, COVID. Uh, we learned how to work home. Yeah, it was nice, but it also changed how many people use the city, the city center. They didn't go to cafes, they didn't buy the stuff. Uh, it's, it's changed a lot of things. So, uh, so there will be a lot of changes in the, in the way we are living. One of the, the things that, that uh, people are trying to say is, okay, we don't have to commute so much. One of the big issues is that we have all these cars, we go from the outside into the city center. But if we could have these uh, smaller cities, the scale of the cities could be as a 15 minute city uh, where we don't have to go so far. Uh, and, and, and commute that much, uh, it could be very, very easy. Uh, and of course, the distance of how 15 minutes is, is time. So are you walking, cycling, public transport or private cars? 15 minutes will be different uh, distances. Um, yeah. And maybe you have seen uh, one of our big heroes in, in, uh, in Denmark and, and, and uh, traveling around the world, Jan Giel. Uh, but my, my my uh, idea to take him with here is actually because it's very important to see how we're living, what kind of city do we want. Uh, and if you want uh, a, a vibrant city, it's uh, very in, uh, important to uh, invite, to play, and uh, how to make the, the city spaces more, uh, more useful for everybody. We try to do that in Copenhagen. Now we have seen some of the nice things that uh, Marshall is doing, but uh, the creativity in the city is also very big for all, all normal people um, making this uh, launch here. Maybe you had 
that's some of your inspiration because there's a lot of people doing very nice things. Um, do I have the time? Oh, you're fine. Um, well, we also do a lot of things uh, differently when we make the, the spaces. Uh, in uh, this is also from Copenhagen, where where we uh, look into how to uh, how to. Uh, do do the design of, of new urban spaces because uh, of course we uh, we gonna make some nice parks and so on but they all always have more functions this one is uh, actually uh, could be uh, one of the floating areas when it's uh, we got the heavy rain uh, this, this park is not only a park it's also a place for uh, for the rainwater so having this multifunctional uh, Planning issues uh, into that, and that's that's the way we we, we look into um, uh, into future solutions inside the cities. Uh, last summer, I went around to all the uh, democracy festivals in in the Nordic countries with a project we call Nordic uh, New Nordic Bauhaus. Maybe you have heard about the European Bauhaus or this uh, thinking of uh, looking into how to live in the future. Uh, the Bauhaus idea is uh, 100 years old from, from Germany and now uh, van der Leyen has said how should we do that, uh, in, how should we live in the future here in, in Europe uh, and make this uh, Bauhaus where we also look into art and uh, have a lot of different people, not only architects but, but a lot of different people, uh, city planners, uh, but a lot of different people uh, discussing how should we live in the future. And uh, I, I took this one with us because um, there was, of course, a lot of uh, suggestions of how to live in the future, but actually in every place there was this discussion, why do we have to hurry so much? Couldn't we live in another way that we don't uh, do all these bad things to our uh, global system? Could we live some more slow? Could we change the, the, the quality of life? So some of the things that, uh, that we are doing uh, could actually come into our lifestyle and with that sort of way, just uh, slow down uh, also uh, some of the economy that is uh, doing the bad stuff. So, uh, so this is me making my, uh, my lamp over fire. Uh, so it's, it's very easy and uh, actually I also had some people from a small village uh, in the northern part of, of, uh, of uh, Jutland uh, participating. They are artists uh, making a, a lot of different uh, nice things. There's a, a lot of surface in Klipmøller, maybe you know Cold Hawaii, but there's also a lot of artists. And they have this community living like, okay, we have to do this. When people move there, we close the shop when there's good waves. We, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, <coughs> are living uh, and uh, trying to give uh, slow a chance. So, um, so that's also a very nice message. There's a lot of drivers of change. What is, uh, what is moving us? A lot of these you know already. Smart cities, access to ownership, uh, mobility, uh, retail, uh, the urbanization I've been talking about, uh, all the crisis. There's a lot of crisis going on now. I could put up the, the biodiversity crisis too, but the climate crisis, of course, the health crisis, COVID was a big one, but we also, uh, a lot of people are growing the wrong way. Uh, we had a lot of different uh, health crises uh, along in the world. Uh, but now we, uh, we had this, uh, uh, I will come back to that, uh, uh, um, a workshop with that in, in, in the beginning of the year uh, where we were looking into new drivers. And uh, unfortunately, and you are very close uh, to, to some of them, uh, cities under siege, there's war, but there's also materials, there's a lot of different things that uh, that are going to uh, to change the way we, we look at cities in, in the future. Uh, how to participate, how do we involve the citizens, uh, how do we go governance that, uh, all the uh, planetary conditioners as I've started my, my speak with, but also all these new ways of living uh, and also the way of, uh, of we're shifting our values to, uh, to think in a different way. We have this all looking more to nature-based solutions, but we also have a tech rush, and what does that mean for us? It's also a driver, uh, and also the way we are producing things, the modes of production is, is also uh, uh, where we today look into a very global scale. Uh, maybe we should have a more local if all this geopolitics is, uh, is going the wrong way, as it seems like at the moment. 
very few words about the uh, regenerative cities. A lot of what I've been talking about is about the regenerative cities. Uh, but the whole idea is uh, going from all the discussions about sustainability uh, to, uh, to regenerative uh, systems. At the, I mean, the most important part of it is that we're going to from uh, just doing uh, less harm to actually doing good. Uh, and doing good is, uh, is of course, a, a very different thing uh, because we don't have the solutions yet. We are looking into uh, to find out how do we do the solutions. Uh, um, this is a little bit technical. There's a lot of, 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 uh, of uh, wording on it, but the idea of showing is that today we are over here. We are consuming, leading, uh, doing uh, harm. We are trying to move here to make the harm uh, uh, reduction. Uh, the goal here is to do no harm when we talk about the sustainability. But the vision for the future is to actually come over here to the regenerative part uh, where we're creating uh, a positive impact on all, everything that we are doing. So, so this is, uh, this is uh, very, very interesting. Uh, and also because when we're looking into the uh, sustainable development goals that we're all working for in all over the world, we actually have goals that is, is only here. So we have to look beyond sustainability. We have started in the Institute a new uh, sort because, as I said, we don't have the solutions, but we need the visions, we need the things. So we are starting a new uh, program called Evolve, where uh, we're looking into new narrative uh, and new scenarios. That's what we need to get moving on. We, we, we need to find a place uh, on the other side, uh, looking for the good ideas, what we actually want, and then if we have the vision for that, like the thinker plan or the clean water in the harbor, uh, we will find the solutions to get there. So we are looking into finding new narratives and uh, looking into uh, making new scenarios. And we invite everybody to, uh, to be a part of this because it's, of course, uh, a big solution uh, for, for the whole world. Uh, so we make these uh, evolve sessions uh, around the world. We started in Copenhagen. We're coming to France this uh, this uh, summer and uh, I would like to invite you to Copenhagen also in the in the autumn we'll do it again there twice uh, and then uh, around in the world where people will uh, will join us uh, and we will try to unfold the cities of tomorrow so when uh, just one slide from uh, from the institute uh, when we look into uh, uh, the, the future there's a different ways to, to look into future and working with future uh, this is the possible things what might happen, there's plausible things, this could happen, there's a probable things that's likely to happen. And what we are looking into now is this desired future, what do we prefer? Uh, because if we pick, set up these pictures, then we have something to, to work against. So uh, our focus in this, um, yeah. the, the focus for this is uh, that we are looking into uh, how do we look at nature, regeneration and of course the coexistence between all species as I was, I was talking a part of nature uh, we're talking about the livability the belongings and the communities uh, shaping uh, between people uh, as I said one of the most important thing is how to govern uh, what is the governance uh, how do we do strategic governance uh, in the cities because of course we already have all the cities we have to change things so what is the urban governance how do we uh, how do we change that? We have a lot of, uh, of course, ideas to that, but, but the most important thing is that we will start to work on the transition. Um, and what I was uh, showing on, uh, on the map, the city systems of infrastructure builder and, and also the e economic systems, the changes in that. These are the focus areas that we are, are looking into uh, and starting up now. Uh, so, uh, and we really like you to uh, participate so if you want, um, you, can, uh, you can take your phone and, and take a, a link into a LinkedIn group where we're collecting people. There are people from all over the world in the group now. Uh, they are looking into uh, from Brazil, Africa. I mean, it's, it's all over. And, and, uh, it's city planners, but it's also people who, wants, who are working with foresight architects and so on. Uh, and we are just making this uh, community Develop again 
and and uh, and will uh, uh, like people to share good ideas and and uh, different uh, connections uh, inside of that. And of course, as I said, we invite to make more of these workshops around in in uh, in the world. So uh, so I hope hopefully we can make that was the director some some time here uh, in the in the future we could uh, make it over here us yes so uh, that that was uh, my message for today uh, so please uh, go and change the world